Now mining trade union AMCU faces an uncertain future. The Registrar of Labor Relations has published the government's intention to deregister the union. The two reasons cited for the decision are that AMCU isn't operating according to its constitution and that it's not a genuine trade union as defined by the Labor Relations Act. Now UDM leader Bantola Misa is strongly against the move, saying it will cause instability. His deputy Aba Yomzi Kwankwa joins us now from our Cape Town studio. Mr. Kwankwa, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Rolomisa saying it's going to cause instability. In what way? How will it cause instability? Remember, a trade union is not just... Thank you very much for having us and good afternoon. Remember, a trade union is not just about the, the uh, Joseph Matundra in this context because we're talking about AMCO and his leadership but you also have to respect the right of the many people, the members of AMCO, to freedom of association. They have decided to associate themselves with AMCO in that context. So what is important and what the president is trying to say is not saying, we are not saying as a party that AMCO should perceive itself as being above the law or not, uh, we should be okay with AMCO as it is alleged by the registrar that they don't want to account on a number of issues. But what we are saying is that due process should have been followed not only that, proper communication should have been made by the registrar to say these are the attempts that we've undertaken thus far to get AMCO to do A, B, C, D and X, Y, Z. And after all of that has failed, we are left with no choice but to resort to this measure. You can't just without communicating firstly with AMCO properly because they're saying AMCO, you had the president of AMCO yesterday saying that there was correspondence between the registrar and AMCO and they did indicate that they intended to hold their Congress this year. But despite all of those attempts, they, the registrar has still taken this, this decision. So it comes across as an abuse of power. Not only that, but it also comes across as if the registrar has a vested interest in the outcome of the elective Congresses of AMCO and the internal processes of AMCO. But why would they have such an interest? What could they gain? Uh, all of these departments, all of these departments, even if you were to look at the Department of Labor, it's made up of ANC people and obviously they would be threatened by the militants of AMCO in that sector, the rise of AMCO and the growth of AMCO in the mining sector. So they, they feel threatened obviously because NUM, if you look at NUM at the present moment, they are a shadow, a pale shadow of their former selves. They're not doing well in that sector. And AMCO seems to be a more credible voice for the people in that sector, so that they would feel threatened as the ANC. But the timing of this happens shortly before elections, happens shortly after they've come out of a very long strike, and when they're still discussing labor-related issues in the sector, it means that there, there seems to be political machinations to try and weaken AMCO in that sector. We cannot allow that at the expense of the people that AMCO represents. But in terms of, for example, if AMCO has done wrong in terms of not holding elective congresses as it should and not submitting audited financials, surely that shouldn't go unpunished if that's true? <clears throat> that's, not, that's why we're saying, we're not saying AMCO is above the law. We're not saying AMCO is too big to fail if you were to borrow a term from the financial sector. What we're saying is that the register should have communicated properly to take the, the, the public into its confidence to say these are the steps we've undertaken to try to get AMCO to comply. These are the correspondences. This is what we've tried in essence to get AMCO to actually make sure that they do what is expected of them. And because all of that has failed, this is the step we've taken. You can't communicate for the first time, especially with the public. Remember, AMCO is not just about Joseph Matundra, as we said, and his leadership. It's also about respecting the 200,000 plus members of AMCO who looked to that union for leadership on labor-related matters. So the, the registrar in this context was very careless. I think they were trying to also take advantage of the pre-election environment to say that we are going to deal with you, don't listen, disarm you, weaken you, so that they can continue to rebuild the norm after elections. All right, that's UDM Deputy Leader Ngaba Yomzi Kwankwa from our Cape Town studio. Thank you very much for your time. Well, that's your news for the moment. I'll be back at the top of the hour. Coming up next is the race. Stay with ENCA.